Hello everyone, i8086SX has yet another Compaq LTE 5000 for you. This is an actual 5000. If you could read upside down, now well, in case you can't, see, 5000. Why do we have another 5000? Well, it is my goal in life to have a maxed out 5000, the original 75 megahertz 5000. Now I could go, well, we could go 90 megahertz, we could go 120 megahertz, which, which does work just fine. But I want to keep the thing as original as possible. Now I also want one that's maxed out. This is one of the perfect DOS gaming machines if you can get the right configuration. Now we gotta go back to say maybe November. I never actually aired the video and I'm not going to. I actually did find a package deal on Facebook Marketplace from a gentleman over in Maryland. Uh, he had an LTE Lite 433C, which was pretty much maxed out. And he had an LTE 5000, which was also maxed out. I don't know if it came with a hard drive or not, but that's uh, that stuff's all minor if it did or not in that case. But they had the LTE 5000 that I bought from this gentleman over in Maryland. It had 72 megs of RAM. It had a floppy. It had a battery that I could at least practice building on, if nothing else. And it looked like from the pictures that it was a winner. Now, come lo and behold, I'd shipped it, or had it shipped. Uh, the, this was a really interesting machine, or set of machines here. We had, both had their flaws. The LTE light, it beeped every time you turned it on. I had beep codes like the video card was going out, but the video card wasn't out, so I don't know what was up with that. I had a motherboard here for it, and I swapped the components of my no good motherboard, and well, good news, we had pretty much a maxed out 433C. In the defense of the seller, he did not have a working AC adapter to test that with, so we had no idea what we were getting into. It was definitely a gamble. The 5000, something happened when it got shipped. I don't know if we got moisture in it or if something just finally died on it, because when I got the 5000, the darn thing, no matter what memory modules I put in it, it would only detect the machine as having 12 megs of RAM. If I pulled out the expansion RAM, the expansion RAM, it detect the 8 megs correctly. So the 5000 has 8 megs on board. But uh, you put anything over 12 in it, you're capped at 12. I didn't want that. I don't know what happened, but it happened. I put the memory module, the 64 meg memory module that it came with, in a 5280. Presto changeo. We had 72 megs. Well, that might even be 80 megs of RAMs. I think those come with 16. But regardless, it detected the full amount of memory on a couple 5280s. I even had a partially defunct processor card, RAM card, and I put it in the 5000, I think it was from a dead 5280. The machine didn't post because that processor card was partially dead, but it detected the full amount of RAM, so I knew it was that processor card. Found another processor card from a place in the UK, and the results were even worse. They didn't detect any expansion memory whatsoever. I got my memory back, or yeah, memory, <laughs> got my money back, excuse me, a uh, cool place to work with, I don't remember the name off of hand, but it's like, oh, just keep the motherboard. It was a partially working motherboard, and who knows, if somebody who wants a 75 megahertz board that doesn't detect additional memory, well, we'll may just offer one for cheap. So, along came this thing, and... This, in my 15 years, 16 years in IT, I have never had a machine that reeked of Lysol wipes. Well, I didn't reek of it, but the person that did sell it to me clearly did their best to clean it up, and hey, at least it's a lot lesser chance of having uh, the coronavirus on it, I guess. <laughs> but I didn't know what I was getting myself into. But it came with a 4X CD-ROM. It had a caddy. There's no hard drive in here, I already checked. I don't even know if it's in 
original to this machine, the caddy itself, but we'll go find out in about 10 seconds here, provided that I can pull this. There we go. Pulled out with little trouble. Yeah, this is almost certainly the original caddies. This is an 810 megabyte drive came with this thing. And it's for an LTE 5000. The battery is a little bit interesting because it's a bad rebuild. Well, it probably did the job at one time, so I can't throw stones at it completely. But it is a uh, very much not the perfect rebuild. Um, this is a Portamax. And it's hard to tell on camera, but in the center, and there's really no excuse for it on these, I'm trying to get a good camera angle. The, my camera work is about as good as this build. There is a noticeable bulge in the middle. The battery still fits. I don't know what's in the center of this thing or why it sticks up so far, but... If this came from a professional company, I'm a little bit disappointed with the build quality on it, but what are you going to do? It does not hold a charge anymore. I was partially hoping when I saw this rebuild that it was a lithium ion. I would have loved to have one for this machine, but beggars can't be choosers. And that's what we got. So the battery is a, a no-go. So let's fire this puppy up. Let's see what we got. Unfortunately, this computer has a couple of other problems. Get this on. It's a little too passive for my tastes, for one. But let's get this thing fired up and let's see what we can come up with. And you'll notice that almost none of the bottom display works whatsoever. It has 40 megs of RAM. I think the CMOS batteries actually still holds a charge in this thing because I had this thing unplugged for quite a while and it's still humming along. And I've never seen a BIOS 55C. I've never seen that before. But when I did get the machine, the BIOS was originally in French. So I had, to, I had to adjust that, but that's, uh, well, it did come from Quebec, so that's uh, the language they speak over uh, up in Quebec, so I, I can't really be too mad at that, so that's, that's part of life. So we're going to shut this unit off, and there is a noticeable difference between the, uh, and yes, this is a 75 megahertz Pentium processor, and the battery... Kind of holds a charge. I'm shocked by that. Okay. That was not a something I was anticipating. The power button's also a little sticky on here. So there are a few flaws with this machine. But overall, it's not in bad shape. Especially for an original 5000, it is in pretty decent shape. Uh, they did clean it up a little bit, which I'm okay with. It was shipped uh, in a lot of bubble wrap. It actually took me over 10 minutes to get it out of said bubble wrap. And that sounds like a complaint in some sense. Rest assured, it's not. If it takes me that long to get through the bubble wrap that somebody puts on something like this, I can't be mad at that. That uh, shows that they do care. But most of my Canadian endeavors have gone, for the most part, pretty good. I had one machine that was a lemon from up there, but yeah, you can't win them all. So let's get in this, get into this computer. I want to steal harvest this processor card and see what we can do. And a little word to the wise, it has nothing to do with this particular 5000, but I did have some issues with the screen on the active matrix screen. And I'm hoping that those don't translate over uh, to the new system. Man, this is a T7, so I grabbed the wrong bit. So let's get the right bit, get our Torx T8. And let's start cooking here. All right. 
So we got ourselves a little Torx action here. Probably spent way too much money on this project, but like I said, come hell or high water, I am going to have a maxed out 5,000. And this one seemed like a fairly good opportunity to get that. I was hoping the one in Maryland would have been basically ready out of the box, but you know, these are 20, these computers are almost 20 years old. You're not going to get perfection, at least not without a little work. You can see all my green glory here. I probably should work on the other side of the machine, but what are you gonna do? And well, there's some scratches on this side. May even be a crack, but yeah, who cares? The one thing I'm willing to let go on this. Uh, Cosmetically, it doesn't have to be perfect. I am more about the specs. I am more about, uh, you know, uh, like uh, Gordon Ramsay said, it's a uh, presentation is great, but taste is king. Maybe one or the other. I think there's a chef from uh, Master Chef Canada that said the same thing. I can't think of the blue haired guy's name at the moment. <laughs> It'll come to me probably at 3 in the morning when long after this is uploaded. But not important for this video. Oh, I got two more screws I gotta get out. So let's get that done. You'd think I have this mastered by now, but apparently I don't. more screws we got to get out of here to access this. May even have to take the memory module out. I did not test the CD-ROM yet. Come on, baby. Come on out. There's no way in God's green earth that there is another something else in the way, is there? It can't not possibly be true here. Right. One thing to note, I uploaded one of these with a I worked on an Armada 7700 the other day, and I tell you what, I appreciate the traditional wires that this one has to offer instead of that uh, crappy uh, ribbon cable stuff that the Armada came with. I really, the stuff was just so fragile and so brittle, I just hate working with it, but traditional wires, we have a little bit of a chance. I just, oh yeah, the power button's sticky on here too, so. I don't know what that's about, but whatever. There's no way I forgot another screw, is there? No way. No way, no how. Well, so now we got... The keyboard is just about separated. I gotta get these two. Now, why am I doing that? We'll just use the... Needle nose as a prying tool here. Eh. 
retrospect, that is probably not the greatest of ideas. All right, keyboard is detached from the system. And definitely an original CMOS battery. This machine definitely was tinkered with before I got to it. Right, we gotta get a few other things out of here before we can access this card. Uh, screen's gotta go the basically useless uh, display down here has to go. Basically useless display is almost out. And I wonder, I may regret this later. But we're going to see if we can take the screws out, remaining screws for the display out. Yeah, we can. That worked in theory. Probably was a bad in theory, but it worked. Oh, that was probably not the best idea, but. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. This is a little bit different from what I anticipated or remembered. Bye. Thanks for nothing. And I will find myself a small flat and screwdriver for that display despite the fact that it is a passive matrix it is still a good display I didn't see any dead pixels on it so I want to try and preserve that if we can and who knows I might uh, decide to say well let's uh, repair the other 5,000 Because it might be one of you out there that may have some nostalgic purposes, even with the passive matrix display. There's a place out in Colorado, they call, I think it's called Dream Hardware. Well, in short, they're dreamers. Because the processor board I'm trying to get to, they want $120 for. And if I'm going to spend that much on a system, I want more than just a motherboard. I want the whole kit and caboodle if I'm going to spend that much. All right, so we got our display out of the loop. Not these things lifted up, these plastic covers, but I guess they don't here. But we got to get the metal cover out next. I don't entirely know how to do that. Or, I have a second thought here, potentially. If we know this system is good, let's add our active matrix display and other pieces to this guy. That's a better idea, don't you think? I like that idea. All right, so I need the, I gotta go move some parts from my other 5,000 here. And to borrow words from an old uh, Catholic school principal, mooching is better than smooching. And bonus points to the folks that know me personally, that know who I'm talking about. Alright, so we got our uh, display from the Donor 5000. Now we just gotta get the rest of it. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but there is a possibility that this display has some issues that it developed since it got here. 
So that is a possibility that we cannot rule out. So, fair warning. Also, I don't know what happened to the memory module, the 64-meg memory module for this. No way that it could have gone very far. I want to get that put in. The memory upgrades for this machine, well... The vast majority of computers is pretty easy, but this one's a lot easier if you can get that, if you can get it while it's half disassembled. For whatever reason, I have a real tough time lining up these memory modules. And it may be a good thing I'm doing this because look at that, it just, <laughs> ain't that wonderful. It just kind of like fell apart in my hands here. Yeah, what the hell happened to the other screw? There we go. That is out of there. So I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get this memory out of here. Because I'll show you what. Usually there's something to grab onto and it's usually screwed in, but these, no such luck. So I'm not sure why it's like that, but regardless, we still have a problem to resolve. All right, let's, uh, we'll try to take our needle nose and see what we can do with that. Yep, that did it. Yep, and I have no idea what this brand is. It says, warranty void if removed, made in Taiwan. Oh, it's a Transcend. At least it's matching. Wait, 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 hold on a minute here. Hold on a minute. This may be a bummer of a project, too. I just... Well, it says LTE 5032-64. So, I have a bad feeling that this one may have a similar problem. I hope not. Yeah, this may be a, this may be a 32 meg module. I have faith. After everything I went through, I have faith. So here is now our Kingston, uh, let's see here, our Kingston E5064 kit of two. Let's slide this guy in. Holy moly, this is, uh, <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about. It just doesn't want us, it takes everything in my power to force this in. There we go, it clicked in. We got more of a mess than I was anticipating, but. All right, that's in. Now let's get our active matrix display in, in here next. That's a big piece of this. I wonder, what do I use this machine for? Well, like everybody else that wants one of these, I'm in it for the DOS gaming aspect of it. And maybe a little bit of nostalgia. It'd help if I hook all this stuff up too. Ha ha ha. Not today, Satan. And I already saw this sold to that guy once. And sound cable. Oh, where did you go? Right over there. You tucked all the way over there. Come back and play with your friends. Yeah. And these are keyed. The sound cables are. They only go in one way. But it looks like mine twisted, so it looks like it could potentially go a different way, but... We are going to uh, do our due diligence and put a little extra light. And I'll see what we get. 
I also completely don't have this mounted correctly, but let's see if we can focus on one thing here. That is now in, I believe. Yep. Okay. So let's get that slid in. Let's cross our fingers and hope to die. No, no hope, no death. My screen is white. I don't quite understand why. I have no display whatsoever now on the bottom display. So I'm not exactly sure what or why my screen is white. This is one of those unfortunate things that happen with this system. But there are also our loose solder joints on these 5000 screens. I'm hoping that that's the only problem I have. Because that's going to really suck if it don't. But we can test this in between time. We're going to plug a monitor into this thing. That's a theory anyway. Well, you have to take my word for it, but we are getting somewhere. Uh, the machine itself does see all 72 megs of RAM now, so we are getting somewhere. Unfortunately, I gotta find out what's going on with the screen, so that's gonna be a little bit of an off new, off uh, line exploration piece. I also gotta find out why I don't have a bottom display now. Maybe I killed it after I took it out too, one too many times. It is very possible I may have taken the dead one from. I don't know. I, I'm just not sure what's all, all going on here, but there is a lot going on with this machine. And we need to find out why. So let me see what kind of digging I can do, and then we shall go from there. Well, I took apart the panel, and the results are a little bit more interesting, to say the least. This almost points to a cold solder problem. And I don't think I can actually see anything of value when I do this, but there's a line there. At one point, if I pressed on this left side or played with this card, I got it to do something a little bit different. And now I can't get it to do it at all, of course, because uh, now we got it on camera, so we got to make a lot filthy liar out of me. All right? What the hell? Yeah, this is rather bizarre. I was surprised this holding this down isn't doing anything. I wonder if it'll turn all white this time and then it'll slowly graduate into, yep, so right now we start all white. And the good news and the bad news, there's a lot, this case is a lot tougher than even like say the 5280. 
So that's good news. The bad news is it's a lot tougher than most of your computers. So I don't know what you want to make of that, but I think that we have an answer here, at least a course of action anyway, on how to handle this next. So we got to either A, get this display replaced, or B, fix this one. And it may be as simple as baking in an oven. Maybe this is a cold solder thing that just suddenly appeared when... Uh, now I can start to tell it's turned black on the top, and I know I finagled with something here, and I got it to go, but but yeah, that's pretty much going to be it for this video. It's a, not the result 100% uh, that I was hoping for, but at least we're making progress. We got the bottom half of the machine pretty much squared away at this point, so we got that going for us. So, that being said, you know, I'll do the best to answer any questions or concerns you may have. Leave them in the comments section as always. And thank you for watching this progress report on my LTE 5000.